ほらルフィ今一緒に海賊になる仲間を探してるんだはい。Oh well, I killed that Lemillion brat and Nighteye. I just now killed him. Sun Eater, is that right? Well, die. Sun Eater grew wings from his back and flew towards Toji was fast. The same speed as him, but Toji was even faster than him. Seeing Sun Eater's speed, Toji realized that he had to take this seriously if he didn't want to be badly injured by him. He ran to Sun Eater to deal a killing blow, but was shot back to the many Japanese style buildings that were there, and before he was launched in the air, Toji shot his pistol to Sun Eater, who blocked the bullets with his octopus arms. The building roofs were broken by the attack from Sun Eater. Toji recovered last, second, as the attack hit the house and was standing in the dust, while Sun Eater looked at Toji, who wasn't even hurt by him. Toji, Come on, I just want this to end. Either go home to your family, or you can die here like the other three I killed. Sun Eater, shut up. I would rather die here than leave this place with my tail stuck in between my legs. Toji sighed and started to walk into the building he was in. Sun Eater saw this, and he too started to walk behind him from below. Toji, I want to tell you something before anything else happens here. Sun Eater, Go for it, bastard, before I kill you myself for killing my friend. Toji, I want to tell you about my quirk, if you are curious about it. Sun Eater said nothing, but he was curious about how fast he was to recover and how he wasn't even hurt by his attack a while back. Toji, well, my abilities are that all five of my senses have been heightened to the max, and my ability to withstand any attack, well, I guess that is a part of it. Also, with my speed, That's why those two weren't even a challenge for me at all. Sun Eater, that doesn't make sense though. If you had a quirk, how were you able to get here without being detected by the HPSC? Toji, well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell you. I have someone working in the HPSC giving me info, and he turned off that little dome to detect quirk genes. Sun Eater saw it was a dead end where Toji was and shot his octopus arms at it where Toji last stood. Toji, there's more to this, let me finish. He was shocked at how fast Toji got to the other side of the building without making noise whatsoever. Toji, you want to know something, Sun Eater or Tamaki? You'd think it would be so fun having two of the top heroes as your father and mother, right? Well, you're wrong if you thought, yes. Having a family who only cares about power is sickening. I lived my life in the shadows of others and I hated it. Sun Eater, shut up. If you want to vent about your childhood, then you can just leave because I don't want to hear it at all. Toji, sorry I got off track, but you want to know how I got here without being detected by the HPSC. Sun Eater, thought you said someone was working for you? Toji, nah, that was a lie to catch you off guard, so I'll tell you. I'm like the invisible man to this dome thing the commission got from Shield Inc. It's useless for me because it can't detect me at all. I guess the commission is dumb for not thinking someone who was hired to come and kill that girl had no quirk. What? This guy has no quirk, and he killed Sir Naitai and Lamillion. Toji, I can see that shocked face you have over this. So, yeah, I have no quirk at all, and your friends seem to die by someone who was supposed to be weaker than all of you. This guy killed everyone without a quirk. How is that possible? Sun Eater, you're lying, you bastard. You do have a quirk. Toji, I can assure you that I am quirkless, but I guess you never know. He said while lifting a finger to his mouth, which was wide open for him to see, that confused Sun Eater who was getting impatient and wanted to end this quickly. Toji, you see, I have a thing called a cursed spirit capable of storing objects like my cursed tools. But you would think that it would have a quirk since I can put weapons in it and the commission would be able to see it, 
but you don't have to say it, if the cursed spirit had a quirk then it should stop me from being the invisible man. Can't have that so I make the cursed spirit small enough to fit inside my body, I keep it inside my stomach. After all the organs of the invisible man are invisible to write. That's how I was able to pass through the dome without being seen at all. Toji in the middle of explaining to Sun Eater threw up the cursed spirit and it started to grow in his hands until it was big enough to fit around his shoulders. They both walked next to each other watching one another's movements in case one of them attacked. Toji, that's why I didn't bring out a cursed tool when I got in here. Both of them still were walking when Toji again was covered by a wall. Sun Eater saw metal shine when Toji walked by a small cap in the wall. Toji, if I got that killing blow on that Lemillion guy, I could have killed him and the Star Plasma Vess. Sun Eater, enough. Quit babbling on about this. I don't know why you killed Anna, but I am going to stop you from hurting anyone else. Toji, it doesn't matter if you stop me because you can't, and you'll die here like those three lying motionless. Sun Eater, is that so? You know I really think you should die. As Sun Eater said he launched a barrage of octopus arms against Toji, but was blocked by him with the soul-split katana, and was in the air grinning like a madman while Sun Eater opened his mouth. It was good that I trained with Nejire before all of this and swallowed her beam. Tamaki shot yellow beams at Toji who saw what he was doing and slashed them with ease while falling to the ground, Sun Eater mixed up his move and put them together. He turned his skin into a whale shark mixed with a crocodile and shot his octopus arms at Toji and thought it would do something against him. But it was all in vain because Toji had slashed his attack without breaking a sweat. Those two animals have the toughest hides in the world, how did he cut through them? Toji cut the arms in half and they came crashing down to where Sun Eater was standing in shock. Toji landed gracefully across from him when the bridge they were standing on started to fall down a hole that led somewhere in the large place. Toji, your quirk is called Manifest, right? Worthless. Sun Eater had decided to trap him until he could think about his next move and use the same move he used earlier. Instead of two, he used all the animals with the toughest hides to trap him in his arms and made a little dome around Toji who was thinking about what to do next and snickered at the trap that was pretty obvious Sun Eater was doing at the moment. In the dome, it was dark until a bright flash got into his eyes when multiple beams started to flash inside. His cursed spirit spit out the inverted spear of heaven and Toji grabbed it to slice his way out when he did Sun Eater was behind with his mouth open and a big red energy ball forming in front of his mouth. Toji, it's over, give up. This might kill me, but it's a risk I'm willing to take to end this guy. The beam was finally ready to shoot at Toji who was smiling at Sun Eater's attack he was trying to do. Times 100, Falcon Blast. As he shot the beam it severely burned his whole mouth to the point it was as black as charcoal. Toji saw it come at him fast last second. The falling building blew up with a flash that blinded both of the men and the building crashed to the ground. Tamaki looked around for Toji to see if he had gotten him or not but it seemed that Tamaki was the victor of the fight. As the smoke cleared Toji wasn't in the last place he last remembered he was before the blast. Tamaki felt happy that he had avenged his fallen comrades and Anna who deserved a better life rather than one filled with grief and pain. She should have lived to see the world one last time, but Toji had to come and ruin that for her. She cried knowing that she would not be able to live free anymore. Anna wanted a life filled with joy, laughter, sadness and grief for the loved ones that would eventually pass one to the other but she would live life to the fullest without anyone ordering her around to heal their son's lost arms or heal their bodies. He felt sad knowing Anna died crying and not dying with a smile in a warm cozy bed, but she had died on the cold hard floor. Tamaki limped to a door that most likely led outside and hoped to call the HPSC for help to recover his friend's bodies, he just wanted this to end and go back to his family especially since his little sister's birthday was in four days. He imagined himself holding his six-year-old sister and asking about his training at Yua, his little family of four living happily and his four younger siblings all waiting for him at home, his little brother showing his quirk, little sister playing with her toys he got her, 
little sister talking about a boy she liked and his one-month little sis. Hey. Tamaki turned around fast to see Toji smiling at him with a smile that shook him to his core. He saw the slug thing spit out a hilt and Toji grabbed it fast out of its mouth, and in a flash Tamaki felt a sharp pain in his chest. Looking down as he fell backward to the ground, saw blood gushing out of his chest at an alarming rate. Toji, that attack almost got me. If it wasn't for my speed, I would have been dead by your little attack. You remind me of someone. Toji, anyway sorry man, but I gave you a chance to leave, and you didn't so sorry it had to be this way, Tamaki Amajiki. Tamaki, cough please cough my family. Toji looked at him with a stoic face watching Tamaki struggle to breathe with probably burnt lungs and two slashes to his chest. Toji, sigh ow, send them something all right. You were probably the first to give me a challenge for a while, Sun Eater. Tamaki looked at Toji's face relieved knowing that his family would be all right, even without their son and older brother to watch them grow into lovely people. His chest was getting slow by the second, and within the next few seconds he looked towards the roof. Tamaki, is that rain? He said amazed that it was raining. Toji looked at the boy with a sigh and walked away from the now dead Tamaki. He made it back to the body of Anna Amanai who was lying motionlessly on the ground in her blood. Toji snapped a picture of her corpse to show a foe that the job was done. Finally, the job was done after killing the four of them. He wanted to leave before someone at the commission realized that something was wrong. Toji was about to leave the place when he heard multiple people running towards him. You there, Freeze. You are under arrest for the murder of three heroes and a civilian. Put that phone down and put your hands up, villain. Toji looked behind him to see the pro hero, crust there with a lot of what seemed to be rookie heroes the commission sent to this place. Toji was about to kill them all until black goo started to erupt from his mouth, which kind of worried him that the heroes already got him with their quirk. It was dark where he was until he heard the voice of all for one. A foe. It seems that we may have a traitor young Fushiguro, my apologies. Toji, the hell was that gross. A foe, that was my quirk. You can rest easy young Fushiguro, you are safe here at the base for the League of Villains. Toji, thanks for the save, but what do you mean you have a traitor someone rat about who I was going to kill? A foe, yes you are correct to assume that. Toji, I knew not to trust you guys, maybe I'll just kill you all. He said, while the cursed spirit spits the spear for him to use. A foe. Now young Fushiguro please that was an honest mistake on my part and it will be settled soon. As an apology I have put an extra 5 million in your contract and I make sure you get home with Kirijiri's warp. Toji looked at a foe with a glare that promised death and a foe for the first time in all his life felt a shiver go down his spine since the battle he had with the second user of his little brother's quirk. Toji walked inside the warp gate putting away the spear along with the cursed spirit and the warp gate finally closed with a foe smiling wickedly where he last saw Toji and started to laugh with excitement. A foe? Ha 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 just who are you Toji Fushiguro no has ever looked at me with a glare and was not scared of me ha 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 not since that bastard Kudo right before I snapped his neck. A foe remembered the weapon Toji had that gave him the chills even thinking about and was fascinated by it. Toji walked out of the warp gate near the house he bought for Rei and Fayumi. Toji walked away from the place, but was stopped by two hands on his shoulders. Where do you think you are going, mister? Izuku looked behind him to see the three women standing there with a small glare and not happy at all with him, it seemed. Nimiri, hi, Izuku. Want to explain why you haven't called or texted anymore for a couple of months when you promised, huh? Izuku. Oh oh hi Nimiri, uh it's just that I was busy with work related stuff and uh yeah just busy. He was whacked in the head by her and was grabbed by the hem of his shirt. While the two girls Ray and Fayumi giggle at his misfortunate, she dragged him to the girl's house and is dropped in the tub by her because she says he smelt like old squid that was left out on the ground for a week. 
He bathed himself until he was clean as a baby when he was grabbed again by his hair and was plopped down in a chair Izuku was about to say something when food was stuffed into his mouth that kept on coming until he was full by all the food that they had made for him. The women talked while he just sat down looking at them talk about women's stuff that he didn't need to hear at all when he heard everyone stop and look at him. Ray, you okay honey, you seem awfully quiet over there. Fayumi, yes I can you okay, cause you seem tired. Mimiri, are you okay Izu? Do you need to go to the hospital, because I'll get recovery girl here for you. Izuku, ah uh, yes I'm fine. I'm just tired that's all work was exhausting. Izuku looked at his phone when it buzzed to see that his money was sent which he was happy about. Ray, what's wrong Izu? Izuku, nothing Auntie Ray just that my boss sent me my money. Nimiri, oh how much did you get? Izuku, just a couple thousand that's all. Anyways I'm tired and I hit the hay you girls good night. Izuku got up and walked up the stairs to his room that the girls set up for him when he came to stay they had told him and laid down thinking about Naitai or his uncle Murai and Tamaki. He just shook his and decided not to think about any more to fall asleep, but that was interrupted by the door opening up to Nimiri standing by the door frame looking sad. Nimiri, can I come and sleep with you Izu? Izuku, ah sure auntie. She grabbed the blankets to cover up with him, and she hugged his back while sniffling. Izuku, what's wrong, Nimiri? Nimiri, it's just that you haven't called me since you moved out of your parents' house, and I was worried about all this time. Izuku, sorry but I was too busy with work. I'll make it up to you next weekend, all right? Nimiri, okay too. They both fell asleep, but Nimiri kept on grabbing him every time he moved to hug him tighter. It was morning when he found himself alone in the bed when Fayomi came to get him for breakfast. A man was walking to a desk with a grim face and sighed at the computer he was at. He was not too pleased at all with what had been happening these past months and his workload had been filled to the max since then. The man started to type on his computer. Sir Naitai Eke Murai Sasaki Kia Death, Gun Wound to the Chest, Lamillion Aka Tagata Mirio Kia Death, Stab to the neck along with four stabs to the thigh and a long slash on the chest along with a stab to the skull with a blade. Sun Eater Ake Tamaki Amajiki Kia 2x like slashes to the chest and a burnt mouth. Code Plasma Aka Ana Amanai Kia Gun Shot Wound to the Head. Mission failed due to target elimination. Party failed to escort target safely to the designation spot of choice. Shield Ink Tech failed. Request immediate checkup for device for any traces of sabotage pending. Interrogate all employees for possible spies. Assailant not found assailant not identified assailant escaped. U.S. principal requests that no more of his students are to be sent off to mission from the HPSC at all. Under no circumstances. Request accepted. Money sent for the family's funerals. Tagata family, $150,000. A Majiki family, dollar one hundred fifty thousand. Sosaki family, dollar one hundred fifty thousand. Send. The man hit send stood up and walked out the door. There waiting was Hawks looking on edge, but had a friendly smile that he knew was fake. Hawk, all right. Akira, it's your turn for interrogation. Come and follow me to where we need to go. Akira, all right. Lead the way, Hawks. All Might Akatashinori Yagi was watching the television with his family when it suddenly switched to the news and it worried him if something happened. Sorry for the interruption, but we are here to break some sad news, folks. Today we have confirmation that two UA students who won last year's sports festival along with Sir Naitai have been found dead this week by an unknown villain. The locals whom Sir Naitai had kept safe from villains have gathered outside his agency to honor the fallen hero along with his young student Lamillion with his friend Sun Eater. Toshinori was in shock that his dear friend was killed along with his soon-to-be student for one for all. His wife and daughter were crying at the information that was told to them that their friend uncle was killed. Toshinori cried knowing that his friend had died before him and vowed to find this unknown villain for him and bring him to justice. Yua. Nezu. It's a shame really that two of my best student were killed. Aizawa was livid by this and was gripping his scarf so hard that was cutting his palm. 
He didn't want his students going in the first place, but the HPSC insisted on it. If it wasn't for the HPSC, his two problem children would have been in the classroom right now and goofing off with each other. Nezu, right it is lunch right now. Why don't we cancel classes right and end early today? Aizawa, you seem tired. Aizawa gritted his teeth and agreed to cancel class for the whole school for the week. Aizawa, did you request to cancel the missions from the HPSC? Nazu, yes I did Aizawa rest assured that no students of ours are going to mission from them as of this moment. Aizawa, good. He walked out of the room and jumped out of the window to visit the boy's family and to apologize to them for sending them out on a dangerous mission. Aizawa teared up for his students. Izuku was putting on a jacket because it was raining and walked outside of his hotel to go do what he had promised Tamaki before he died. The ride to where he needed to go wasn't that far Izuku made it when his body was being put to rest with a family of five crying harshly for him. Izuku finally walked up when the women's kids went to go see their other family members and he was standing beside her while she cried for her son. Izuku, hey are you Mikoto Amajiki? Mikoto, ah uh, yes why do you ask? Izuku, well Tamaki was my friend for quite some time and when he told me he would die any time for being a hero. I promised that I would help out his family so here you go ma'am. Izuku handed her a paper and was shocked by what was on the paper. She was about to refuse it until Izuku said otherwise. Izuku, just take it. A week passed since he had given Tamaki's family a large sum of money to keep them going for years. Izuku was at a coffee shop enjoying his peace when... Big brother, is that you? He heard a little girl's voice behind him and Eri was standing there with a happy face that her big brother Toji was here. Irai, big brother, it's me, Iri, remember? Izuku. Ah, uh, hi, Iri, yeah, I remember you crying on my legs. So what do you want? Iri, well, I just saw and ran to you when I did. Izuku, try not to say my name around anyone, all right, can't have someone coming here to fight me for what I did, you know. Iri, okay. She said with a cute smile that reminded him of his wife, and he was thinking more about his wife recently in the past months, which was bugging him that he was. Ire, hello, big bro. I asked if you could show me Megumi again, please. Izuku sighed and paid for his drink along with a small tip for the cashier, and brought Ire to a forest to show her Megumi, but when he brought out Megumi and his phone rang. Izuku, here play with him until I'm done with this phone call. He picked it up to hear a foe start to speak. A foe, young Fushiguro, I wish to speak to you this following week if that is possible. Toji, you handle that rat problem yet because I ain't trying to get ratted out from being with your child's league. A foe, that is what I wish to talk to you about this coming Saturday if you're willing to help this old man. Toji, sigh fine I'll be there Saturday. A foe, thank you young Fushiguro, have a good day. Izuku hung up the phone to see Iri holding the soul-split katana. Izuku just sighed when she fell with Megumi still on her shoulders laughing. Izuku, well it's getting dark, Iri, let's go. Iri, okay. He picked up the cursed spirit and it shrunk for him to swallow. Iri was holding Izuku's hand while she took to him where she lived and saw his other uncle walking out the door looking worried along with his annoying wife Emmy. Aizawa, Iri, is that you? He walked up to the little girl worried for her. Iri, it's all right, big brother Taj. She looked behind her and saw her big brother gone when he was just standing there a second ago. She was with that Toji guy Tsukachi told me about. Aizawa, sai come Eri, it's come for dinner. Irai, okay? Toji walked out of the warp gate to see all for one on his chair, talking to a fat-looking doctor on a screen. A foe, sorry Garaki, I have business to attend to, we will talk about this when I'm done. Ah young Fushiguro, what a pleasure that you are here now before I carry on with Traitor, the doctor wishes to know how the small Namu were for you. Toji, they came in handy, and they did what I wanted them to do. A foe. That is nice to hear, but now on to our little problem at hand. The traitor seems to be one of the members of the League of Villains. A foe heard Toji grumble at the info, but carried on. A foe. Now, young Fushiguro, I want you to be the one to get rid of my problem, if you may. 
Toji, you want me to do this for you because? A foe. Because I had saved you from being captured, so you will do this for me. Toji, Sai fine so who is this traitor then huh? A foe? The traitor is. Line break. Toji walked into the bar while everyone was doing their own thing and they all looked at him while he sat down on the stool when Kirijiri walked up to him. Kirijiri, Mr. Fushiguro, what's wrong? Toji, get me a drink. Kirijiri, right away, Mr. Fushiguro. Tamira walked to him with a face full of anger. Tamira, what are you doing here, Toji? Toji, your sensei convinced me to be a part of your little league. Tamira looked shocked but was happy that his sensei had convinced another person to join his cause for destruction. Kirijiri, here you go, Mr. Fushiguro. Toji, thanks. Tamira, well, that is good now. Our rep will rise to the roof with you here, Toji Fushiguro, and that's a bonus perk with you here now, but what's your quirk? Toji, I'm strong, fast, and all five of my senses are set to the max. Tamira, boring. But no matter as long as you do your part, the League welcomes you. Toji, thanks, he said while scanning all of the League members. Toji got up to leave the place since he introduced himself to Tamura again like a foe wanted. Just a few more months until the UA exams start until I can go for that job, now just gotta weed out this problem in the League, and I'll be paid. End of Hidden Inventory Arc Izuku was standing on top of a building where the hideout was placed and knew if the trader was going to contact someone, it would be now in the middle of the night. Seeing someone in a black sweater covering their head coming out of the hideout and knew this was the person to blame for the leak of killing Anna. The figure walked in a way not to be suspicious of anyone near them, but still walked fast somewhere and the place was a building that looked old and run down. Izuku slowly made his way into the building without being detected by anyone, the place was well guarded for an abandoned warehouse. Further in he heard voices talking about something he missed and saw a woman in a suit talking to the person he has to kill soon. The woman had a stoic face and blonde hair, Izuku knew who this was now the president of the Hero Commission and was now thinking if she knew that Anna was getting killed then. Why didn't she send any more heroes the day to guard her rather than U.S. students and one pro-hero? HPSC Prees, codename, lookalike, what is your report of the League of Villains and have they gained more members? The mission is going smoothly ma'am and yes today they have gained a new member as you already know him, Toji Fushiguro. But I believe that is not his real name unfortunately, I do not have his real name given to you ma'am sorry. HPSC Prees, that is all right soon enough, we will figure it out to gain control over as we do for our other employees, but Toji Fushiguro was not supposed to be in the equation him lookalike you may have been compromised already, so we may have to cut down the days we meet if you are and slowly get you out of there do you understand me? Yes ma'am, then I will meet you in two months to give you another report for the League. HPSC Prees, indeed you are dismissed lookalike, we will see you in two months, or we will be forced to make you disappear if you betray us. Yes ma'am. Izuku heard the person faintly say, bitch, under their breath, and now the meet came to an end when the lookalike was now walking out of the warehouse walking back to the hideout the league was located at, and was now walking inside the bar without knowing they were being watched the whole time. Izuku was sitting in a rather large bakery run by a couple and was eating a strawberry cake that didn't cost much around $1.625 for three slices. Eating one slice he was watching his phone for details about the trader's quirk, Izuku or Toji was not a vengeful person. Okay Toji was but the trader almost got him caught and was not going to let that slide. About to take a bite of his second slice, a group of children around six or seven walked up to him and looked like they wanted to ask him about something. Hey, Mr. Izuku. Ah, uh, yeah. We wanted to ask you a question. Izuku did not know what was going on whatsoever and decided to play along with the rather curious children. Izuku, what did you want to ask? We wanted to know how you got the mark on your lip. The question of an innocent child wondering why he had a scar on his lip, not knowing asking someone that kind of question was insensitive to people. 
but at last it was just a child who didn't know any better. Izuku, ah well I got it, when a villain blew up a building next to me when I was probably around your age. A boy with dark brown hair looked amazed by his answer and wanted to know more about what happened. And what else? Izuku, ah well after that, when the building blew up a piece of glass cut my lip and I woke up in the hospital a few hours after. They all said wow from his little tale of the past, and as they all wanted to know more a person walked up to them, breathing heavily telling them something. Kids, what did I say about running off on your own? You know how dangerous it is. Children, sorry miss. Himura. Izuku looked at Fayumi Himura panting while he looked at her and finally looked up to see him with her kids. Fayumi looked embarrassed by the fact Izuku had seen her look ragged and sweaty from the running she did to catch up to the children, Izuku sat with her while the children ate cake. Fayumi, I didn't think you'd be in Mustafa Iken do you have work here? Izuku, yeah I got a job from my boss, I'm just taking a break when he has to call me after, you have a field trip with your class. Fayumi, Ah yes we are since they had all passed a test, I promised them cake today, so here we are. Izuku? Well that's nice, but I got to get going Fayomi my boss won't like it if I am late for my duty. Fayomi, that's alright I can, but you look tired you should head back home my mom is there she can make you dinner. Izuku? Nah it's okay I have a deadline to be done by this week so I don't want to get fired, but I'll be home when I can so for now by Fayomi. He said while she said bye to him also and Izuku walked out of the cafe to the place a foe had sent for the place the traitor was located, he wanted Toji to go on a mission with him and a plus one so it would be suspicious for the person. Getting there was an old apartment and Toji walked into it to see Dabai and twice talking to each other about something. Dabai Sup Toji looks like Handjob wants us to go kill some people and said that you'll be paid $50,000. Twice Cool, we get the recruit piss off you, newbie. Toji, well, let's get started since I have places to be and stuff to handle. The three of them walked to a warehouse with many cars and motorcycles in the front. They heard people talking amongst themselves about their boss, wanting to move crates of trigger to deal with villains. Izuku spat out the cursed spirit and pulled out the soul split katana for his choice of weapon to deal with these losers so he could just kill the traitor already. Dabai told twice to transform into him to hurdle flames and cause them all to panic which he did by yelling at him and telling him okay at the same time, they all started to shoot at the three with Toji blitzing towards a group and slashed their chest killing them instantly along with Dabai shot, his blue flame blasting them into char-like bodies, twice made his clones do the same as Dabai and made Toga clones to deal with the rest. They walked out with a bag of money and walked out with a knocked out person Tamura wanted to meet with the group of the hideout and saw Tamura telling Kirajiri something and stopped to see they had returned with the target he sent them to get. Tamura, nice work you guys. Toji, sensei wants to see you right now. Toji, got it. The warp gate opened for him to see a foe sitting on his chair smiling at him with a fake creepy smile. A foe. Nice to see you young Fushiguro, how is the traitor doing? Toji, they're good but they might be on to us that we suspect them, and they are right about that so other than that all is good. A foe, that is good, but it seems that I need them to be gone in case they ruin Tamura's plans in the future. Toji, so you want them dead now, or should I take them somewhere else in case they try to fight back? A foe, Take them somewhere else, I don't need heroes coming here in case they hear something going on here. Toji, alright but after this we're even don't want you thinking I owe you everything in the damn world. A foe, of course young Fushiguro of course. Toji, well I'm out of here be back in a few hours. He walked into the warp gate back to the bar to see everyone talking about getting more people on their side and Toji walked to them in the middle of talking. Toji, twice we need to go somewhere. Twice, where are we going? Piss off I ain't going nowhere. Toji, just hurry up I don't got all day. Twice, all right maggot. Tamira, hold on where do you think you're taking my NPC to Toji? Toji, ask your sensei. 
Toji and twice walked out of the bar to go to the forest he knew like the back of his hand and pulled out his cursed spirit. Twice. Where are we going Toji? We've been walking for hours now. Where are you taking me? Toji. Just a little bit further now. I hide some money here to use for the group and you are the only one I trust who wouldn't tell anyone about this at all right. Twice. Yes, I am trustworthy Toji. I promise I won't tell you'll tell everyone. Toji found this amusing right now, and he thought that Twice's acting was good for someone who was a rat maybe even a risk to him too. Walking up to a tall tree Toji stopped in front of it and looked back to Twice who was now confused about where he had taken him to suddenly Toji saw his eyes widen for a moment. Twice, so you guys found me out huh? Toji, sorry man, but you would have lived longer if you hadn't snitched on me for killing those people. Twice. Well, we could have stopped you. Toji. Yeah, you could have, but did you? Because I seem to be standing here now and not in a prison cell as of right now. Twice. We heroes are going to take you all down sooner or later, Toji Fushiguro. Toji. Yeah, yeah, spare me from your little hero lecture, please. I've heard it a thousand times since I was just a scrawny little kid. Twice. Then you know we are going to stop you, it may not be now, but it'll come sooner or later. Toji. Like I said, I've heard it already, so we going to fight to see who gets to walk out of this forest dead or alive. Or are you just going to let me cut you down without a fight? Twice. I know who you are, Toji. You've killed a lot of stronger people than you. Why would you think me who can only clone people think I can stop you? Toji. Yeah well I kind of expected a fight from a spy sent by the HPSC got anything to say before I kill you. Twice. Yeah, it was an honor to serve this country. Toji, huh? Twice his head exploded only leaving his body behind. Toji looked at his body shocked that the HPSC would put bombs in their spies' heads. He pulled out his phone to call a foe of the news that the sky was dead. Toji, so he killed himself or they did. A foe, what? What do you mean? Toji, yeah his head just upped and exploded. A foe. Well as long as Tamura's plans are not exposed that is that. Since you are done with that young Fushiguro do you plan on staying on Tamura's crew? Toji, like I said I work alone. A foe. But I saved you from those heroes back then young Fushiguro? Toji. Yeah you did, but I didn't say anything about joining his crew in this deal of foe, well I'm hanging up call if you need something done or someone killed by. Toji hung up the phone and walked back to his hotel to chill out and plan for his next bounty. His phone rang again and saw that Ray was calling him. Izuku, ah uh, yeah? Ray, hi honey just wanted to tell you that you should come over for dinner tonight Nimuri is coming and she wanted to see you again. Izuku, sure what time? Ray, around 10 p.m. Izuku, sure I'll be there. Izuku cleaned up and started to head to Ray and Fayumi's house for dinner. While walking there he saw that Dabai was hiding behind a wall near their house. Toji, what are you doing here Dabai? Dabai, nothing just walking around why? Toji, well it seems to me that you are spying on me. Are you also a spy from the HPSC? He froze just from hearing that and looked at Toji who was on high alert just from him being near the girl's house. Dabai, what do you mean a spy from the HPSC? Toji, well I guess there's no harm in telling you that twice was a traitor that a foe wanted me to kill, do I need to kill you here and now Dabai, or are you going to just walk away? Dabai, sai na meet you back at the bar Toji. He walked away from Toji looking down at the ground and was finally gone from the house. Toji just kept staring at where Dabai was last walking when he felt a hand on his shoulders and saw Fayumi looking at him with a worried expression. Fayumi, what's wrong Iken? We made dinner, but we saw you standing out here for 20 minutes. Izuku, nothing Fayumi thought I seen someone that I knew. Let's go eat Nimuri is probably worried about me too. Izumi was thinking about something recently about her older brother Izuku, and she thought about why she was even bullying him for being quirkless in the first place. Was it because their parents expected so much from her, or was it because she didn't want him to be killed, what was it that led her to this conclusion and why did she do it? 
She was sitting in her brother's old room looking at how it looked the same as when they moved in years ago walls clean, his bed that looked untouched for years, and his closet filled with basic clothes that looked like they were brought from a thrift shop. Why did she even do this at all in her mind, she was protecting her brother from the danger of being a hero. But looking back it was Katsuki's dumb idea to bully him in the first place, and now she has to live with the facts that her brother now hates her, and everyone that they both know. The day he moved out suddenly was her reminder about all the stuff she had done to him like not being the sister he needed the most when he needed it the most, but that was ruined by her and her friends even now she feels like they drifted off the path of a hero, since the day they all had laid hands on Izuku for not having something he didn't have control over. Izuku still has not come to visit them at all, and he didn't even go to their uncle's funeral at all. She still remembers the day he changed for the worst, she saw that he stopped trying to get their parents' attention with all the achievements he got from school. The look in his eyes went from a bright green color to a dull green that held no light anymore that worried her if she had done the right thing. But who was she to think what she did was right in the first place? Was she guilty or not? She didn't know if what she had done was good or bad because she had felt guilty and not guilty for all the stuff she had done to her brother and with other people encouraging her some were kids her age and some were older, she didn't know at all no one stopped her once at all. So why didn't she do something about it since she now felt as if her brother had already drifted apart from being a hero? Why when she knew his spirit was broken the day she had broken his trust in her, why couldn't she just go downstairs to tell her family what they had done to him? She knew why, it was because of that damn stupid Katsuki threatening her to not tell no one at all. Izumi walked out of her brother's room for the fourth time that day, she checked her phone for a text from Izuku who now that she thought about it, he may have cut all ties with everyone since he moved somewhere else. Her mother was in the kitchen trying to call Izuku, but to not get it through only for it to say that she could not call the ID since it was deactivated. Inko, why can't this get through? I've been trying to call Izuku all this time since his uncle had passed, and he doesn't answer his calls at all. Izumi just walked by her pretending not to notice her frustration and walked to her large backyard to train for the exam coming in 10 months, which was all good to her since she had already trained her quirk to the max since the day she got it. There was another reason she was training, her father Tashinori, or rather All Might chose her as his successor for his quirk one, for all that was passed down to many other users in the past, to build up power to defeat a man called All for One. Her father had defeated, but he knew a foe was alive since he had not found a body anyway, she trained her body to withstand the quirk to train, the process of the quirk being given to her was gross, but in the eyes of her father, it was worth since his daughter was wielding the quirk. The first time she used the quirk her whole left arm was in bad shape, and her father had to call a woman named Chiyo, or rather recovery girl who helped heal her. The days go by when all she is doing is training for the UA exams every day, but she just can't get her brother out of her head, the guilt of being a bully to him, but the other side of her just cares about her and her alone to become the number one hero. The ten months passed in a flash, and she had about 25% of Ofa to Tashinori. It was a good percent for the school since that quirk can literally blow someone in pieces with a simple 100% punch. It was the morning of the exam, and she didn't know why she was waiting in front of the building right now since her friends were already inside getting ready for the exam, so she just walked inside the building feeling good about the exam already. The written exam was rather hard, but not too hard for her since half the questions were just half-baked answers for them to answer. The real test begins as of right now. It begins with getting robot kills that have different points on them like the one-pointer, two-pointer, three-pointer, and lastly the zero-pointer like the name it doesn't give anyone points but takes points as a penalty for destroying it. Everyone was loaded onto a bus to each foe city labeled by an alphabet, and there she was getting really to use Ofa to boost her speed and use her quirk to destroy since that was the plan for her until she could use more of the quirk's power much like her father can. Present Mike, are you kiddos ready? Remember the rules and good luck to you all. Get ready. Set. Goo. 
The ones with speed quirks were in front of the group getting ready to destroy pointers for their admission to the school and finally, everyone had made it into the city to destroy for points. Izumi split a two-pointer in half with her quirk and used the scrap to hit the other robots in front of her, while some looked at her in amazement and envy some were focusing on themselves. May unique people were in the exam like a girl with earphone jacks for ears, a kid who can turn into steel, one who had vine hair, and a bot with mufflers on his legs. Observation Room Nezu, my what an interesting group of children in this year's exam wouldn't agree everyone. Snipe, yes some with good quirks and some with really bad personalities like those two kids with explosive quirks. 13. I'm rooting for that gravity girl Ochako Yuroraka with her gravity quirk. Nizu, your daughter seems to be doing all right, don't you guys think? All might. Yes, indeed, she is doing quite all right in there. They all were commenting about how good everybody was while Inko just stared at the video feed looking around for someone. Queen Asper, too bad Izuku didn't try out for the exam. Midnight, I tried to get to him too when I visited him yesterday, but he said that he's got something more important to do than this. All might, wait midnight you talk to Izuku? Midnight? Well yes I have done since the day he moved out of your house, why do you ask? Queen Asper, he hasn't been answering our calls since that day and we don't know where he lives. Midnight? Ha huh, I thought he told you where he moved because he said that he told you not too long ago. Nezu? Yes, a real shame, but we should let the zero-pointer loose now, don't you think? Powerloader pushed a big red button that activated the large robot that was now making its way toward the many participants who now were in shock at how large the zero-pointer was next to a building. All that was close to the large machine ran for their lives since it was breaking buildings in its path, some were scared just from being there and regretted. Izumi saw that everyone was gone from under the robots, she felt like she needed to prove herself for some reason everyone was a weakling to her, but the other part of her told her just to walk away from the scene that would do something to blow her cover for Ofa. She thought, what would Izuku do? And calmed down to just go back to the rest of the group, but suddenly a large piece of debris went toward the boy with mufflers on his legs, Izumi blitzed to him in a flash to break the debris in pieces. The boy looked at her amazed by her save and bowed down to her at a 90-degree angle calling her a true hero. She held a scoff at his words and walked away from them all. The teachers were amazed by her save, while the two Yagi parents felt proud for raising a fine hero. The only thing was did they even raise Izuku to be a hero. Soon after the exam was over everyone had a two-week break to receive their letter of admission to the great Yua. Katsuki was blowing up her phone to answer her, but she just ignored him ever since he threatened her that day in school. While the two weren't on the best terms she actively talked to his sister since she was tame, but still wild she could handle her instead of Katsuki at all. Inko, honey it's here, it's here. Izumi ran downstairs to grab the letter that determined her future and opened it to see her father in a weird suit that looked like it was going to burst from one movement. All Might Hello young Izumi, it is I all might. Haha -ha here to give the test score for the exams okay so for the written portion you got 89% congrats on your intellect, and for the physical portion of the exams you got 39 villains points and the last super secret part of the exams because what kind of hero school would we be if we didn't count the heroic deeds of everyone? For saving the boy named Tenya Ida, you got yourself 20 hero points congratulation young Izumi welcome to your hero academia. Izumi just stared at the letter for who knows how long when she saw her phone going off with Katsumi's number ID and picked it up to talk about how she had done in the exam, the two talked until their families called them for dinner. Weeks went by for Izumi training Ofa and still trying to come to terms with whether she was guilty or not, the gate was still the same when she came for exams was not too cool. Walking in someone handed her a map of where they needed to go for classes, she was in class 1A with a teacher named Shota Aizawa, who she didn't even know who the person was at all. The walk wasn't too long for her, the door was big, and as Izumi walked in the person, she didn't need to see right now was talking to his sister about something. 
A sign said to pick a random seat much to her luck Izumi sat far away from Katsuki while the raging dog glared at her and stopped knowing it wouldn't work on her as much as her weak brother. A man walked in looking tired with bags that looked like black eyeliner, the man just looked at everyone slowly quieting them down. My name is Shota Aizawa and I am your homeroom teacher for the next three years, usually we have to go down to the gym for your welcoming to UA, but I think that is a waste of time, I ask you to put these on because we are having our first test. A test already come on. It didn't take long to get dressed for the test, while it did take some people to come out Izumi talked to some people while they waited and met some nice people. Finally Aizawa called everyone out to hear what he had to say to them. Aizawa, okay so today we are doing a test to see the limits of your quirks. Now I want everyone to go there 120% on this test, or there will be making you redo every single test until you stop holding back that means you Mr. Todoroki. Katsuki Bakugu why don't you use your quirk first to show everyone what to do in the test. Katsuki, got it teach. He grabbed the ball from Aizawa who told him to use his quirk to throw it as far as he can throw it. He popped his quirk a bit and threw it as hard that left the sky smoking while he did that he screamed die. Aizawa, nice 722 not bad Katsuki but next time don't scream die makes you look like a villain. All right everyone in this test all of you can use your quirks to your advantage, even if people think you cheating it's not cause I allowed it now get ready to bring out 120% for me or else. Wow this is going to be fun. Aizawa, fun you say huh? Well the person who gets last place I will be expelling them and blacklisting them from ever joining a hero course, let's see if that's fun like you said. 50 meter dash. There was only one victor in the dash, which was the boy Tenya Ida with his speed coming out on top with 304 seconds on the clock with Katsuki coming second with 418 seconds which pissed him off. Grip Strength Test Mizo Shoji came out on top with a force of 540 LKG, while Izumi was second with 56 kg. Standing Long Jump Katsuki came first clearing the sandbox with ease and the French boy Yuga Aoyama was second also clearing the sandbox with Izumi also clearing it too. Repeated sidesteps. A midget named Maita Minoru won by using his hair quirk to bounce himself continuously beating everyone in the test. Ball throw. Achako Yuraraka won this by a long shot everybody knew this even Katsuki because she had gotten herself an infinity with her gravity quirk, Katsuki did it again but got a 705 too and finally Izumi got a 999, one while using Ofa at 5%. Distance run. Tenya, Momo, Todoroki and Izumi made it all in the top fours while the rest were just now making it back. Seated toe touch. The pink gal herself Mina Ashido won this one with ease, most all the girls did well while some boys were trying their best, but some like Minta tried to look behind the girl until a rock flew to his head knocking him out. Sit-ups Meshiro Ajiro won this with 250 push-ups and Izumi got 140 along with Katsuki. Aizawa Okay that is it for the test everyone and now the results are going to be posted and also if you think you don't deserve this rank you got well you should have tried at your 120% because this ain't middle school where we baby you for your quirks. The result was brought up and shocked Izumi with the rank she got while looking. Aizawa looked at her with a glare. First, Momo Yayurazu. Second, Katsuki Bakugu. Third, Tenya Ida. Fourth, Katsumi Bakugu. Fifth, Fumikage Takoyami. Sixth, Mizo Shoji. Seventh, Shoto Todoroki. Twenty-second, Izumi Yagi. Izumi felt sacred for herself right now, Aizawa called her over to talk to her, and she shook while walking to him. Aizawa, do you know why you're last place Yagi? Izumi, no sir. Aizawa, well what do you not get when I say, Give it your 120%, does that mean to hold back? Izumi, I know what you meant, Mr. Aizawa. Aizawa, then why are we here talking about this then? Because you're holding back, I've known you since you were a kid, and I know you are holding back, that's why your brother should have been here instead of you. Izuku should have been here? Did he say that knowing he was a quirkle? Aizawa, 
Even if he didn't have a quirk, he would have done better than your little posse of yours, but now you're going to redo the ball test again. And if you decide to hold back that's on you and I expel you and no not even your mom can convince me to not. The ball was thrown back to her with Aizawa watching her movement like a hawk waiting to see if she would hold back or not to stay here or not. Izumi charged up Ofa to her max percent her arm started to light up with red lines and finally she cocked her arm back and threw the ball again. Aizawa well that's what I like to see keep doing that and you will see the next day here if you do that also goes for everyone. I don't tolerate lazy and overconfident people who think they are top of the food chain. That means you Katsuki this ain't preschool anymore act like a grown up and not like a child about to have a temper tantrum. Shoto use your fire. This is why you were not in the top three because you held yourself back, the rest work on the places you lack, and you'll be on top by the time you are done these three years get back to the classroom too and check your syllabus for classes also mine to minoru do to placing last place pack up and leave, class dismissed while I take him to the principal. Everyone walked back to class shocked that their teacher had just expelled someone, Momo was also shocked because she had thought he was lying about the threat of expulsion. Kirishima. Hey Yagi, did you know Mr. Aizawa before? Izumi. Yeah, he's my uncle. Mina. Wow, really must be hard having a strict uncle like that. Izumi. Yeah, it is, but I know he just wants what's best for us. Mina. Also, I've been meaning to ask you Yagi, but do you know Izuku Yagi because you guys have the same last names? Izumi. You met my brother? Mina. Yeah, really tall, muscular guy with a scar on his lip. Izumi. Yeah, that's my brother all right, how do you know him? Mina. Well, we met in a store when he was buying stuff and plus he saved me not too long ago from a guy about to kill me. Denki. Wow, what happened? How did her brother save you? Mina. Well, a guy had a gun to my head threatening to kill me, but Izzy was so fast he took the gun away from him in a flash and just punched him knocking the guy out really quickly. What's his quirk because he was so fast that day no one seen him coming that fast? Izumi, he is actually quirkless. Mina, what no way, he has to have a quirk, he was so fast that day. Izumi, no I'm serious he's quirkless. Mina, Really, but he was so cool that day he was like swoosh, then pow, ya you know. Izumi. Oh well, unless he was hiding that fact he has a quirk my parent would have found out, but I guess not. Mina. You live with him right, why don't you give him my number for me please? Izumi. He moved out after my birthday, and he hasn't called anyone in our family except my auntie. Mina. Oh well, I guess we'll meet soon then, well it was nice talking to you Yagi. The rest of the day was just getting to know one another and what classes they had with one of the teachers and she saw that her father was going to teach the heroics after lunch. Izumi didn't think he was going to teach at all, but maybe it as because of Ofa. Aizawa. Okay, it is the end of the day, you may go home early, but remember to be ready for tomorrow in case you join Minta on the blacklist. He knew what he was doing to them, and he enjoyed seeing them squirm at the thought of being expelled by him. The thing was he wanted his nephew Izuku in here, ever since seeing him save Mina on that day, he was about to step, but Izuku's speed was too fast for even him to see, the way he walked away from everyone to escape until someone offered him something, but he was a tricky person to follow every time he was close to him at all, and Izuku ended up sneaking away last minute. Oh well might as well go get something for Emmy and Eri for tonight's dinner. Walking by a cake shop, Eri was eating a cake Toji bought for her and she ate with him while he was on the phone with someone. Toji, yeah I'll get it for you guys. No, give me by tomorrow and I'll get it to you then. Yeah bye. Okay, Eri time to go home. Eri, okay big brother. Izumi walked halfway to school this time still wondering about her guilt. Finally she had made it to her second day of UA, where she would be the strongest out of everyone, or is she the best? Anyway, today was the day her father was going to teach heroics to everyone after lunch was the class he teaches. The day passed by when a loud noise made its way toward them in their classroom. All Might, I am coming through the door like a normal person. Classroom, All Might, All Might. 
Haha, ha, it's nice to see the future in front of my eyes. Good to see you all, little fledging. Tsuyu. Wow, he's even wearing his Silver Age costume, Kiro. The classroom started to blurt out questions to the overwhelmed All Might who was trying to calm everyone down. Tenya. Everyone please quiet it down. All Might is trying to tell us something. All Might. Thank you, young Tenya. Now let me tell you all about what we have planned. So today we are doing a villain vs hero training exercise, get your costumes that the support class made for you. After everyone saw All Might reading a script, they made their way to change rooms to get into the costumes they all had designed themselves. Once done they now were standing next to a building entrance that led to an empty office building. All Might, now that everyone has their costume on we shall randomly pick teammates for each other. But since there is one student gone, someone will have to go two times. Shouto, I'll do it all might. All might, thank you for taking one for the team, young Todoroki. Okay now, since that is handled, why don't we pick random teams from this weirdly placed top hat with your names in it? Team 1, Izumi Y, Ijiro K. Team 2, Katsuki B, Ida T. All might. Team 1 is heroes and Team 2 are villains. The rules are simple not killing or trying to land a killing blow on anyone, or I will deal with you myself, okay? Secondly, if the hero even grazes the bomb you are protecting heroes win, or if time runs out villains win if the heroes did not touch the bomb, okay now villains go inside to talk about your plans along with the heroes go form a plan to defeat the villains. Kirishima Alright, we're teammates Yagi, let's win this. Izumi, yeah you got a plan, or are you going to follow what I do? Kirishima, I'll follow you, Yagi you seem smart to hatch a plan to win this. He said with a smile and thumbs up to her, she resisted scoffing at him so she came up with a plan to take down Katsuki alone, while he took care of Tenya, the two were getting ready for All Might to say they could enter. All Might, you may enter now heroes. That was their cue to go in and found the two guarding the bomb. But the bomb came to them in a flash, Kirishima was blasted to the sidelines while Izumi watched it happen, and looked to see Katsuk standing ten feet apart from her, she got into a fighting stance to fight Katsuki. Izumi, Kirishima, if you can get back up go find the bomb and deal with Tenya. Kirishima, got it, be back Yagi good luck. The two looked at him run the way Katsuki came from. But he didn't care Katsuki just wanted to talk to Izumi since she had been avoiding him for almost a year now. He looked at her with a calm face but deep down he was hurt at what she was doing. He didn't know why she had been avoiding him, the great Katsuki was what he thought. Katsuki. No avoiding me now Izumi, after I beat you come talk to me after school. Izumi. Not a chance Katsuki, not like you're going to win anyway at all. That chipped at his pride and ego a thousandfold, Katsuki now was in the air blasting his quirk to lift him in the air and was about to hit Izumi in the face to try and knock her out, but was countered by her quirk that left him suspended in the air by a light green aura. Izumi, you seem to have forgotten my quirk Katsuki, let me show you how much I've improved since we last we each other. She flung him to the wall which created a web of creaks in it. Katsuki felt light-headed getting up from her attack. He was able to get up for only a bit when he was grabbed again with her quirk and launched to the other side of the room again. Katsuki didn't know what to do at all since her quirk was good at all ranges. Looking down at his gauntlets a grin came to his face and knew that he was going to have to use his ace, but the only problem was that not too much sweat was built up in them, so the explosion was going to either be small or big. But you know it's go big or go home, and he decided to go big with this gamble. Quickly getting up again Katsuki lifted his arm to aim it at Izumi who was slowly walking towards him since she didn't know what the gauntlet did she just assumed that they were just something to show off to people. Though she was right on that Izumi didn't know its propose at all, when he pulled the pin finally realizing what he did she started to block whatever came toward her and reinforced herself with Ofa to limit the damage. Izumi thought she heard her father say something on her earpiece when Katsuki pulled the pin, the attack had hit her forearms leaving them bruised up and bleeding from the medium-sized explosion, they would have been worse if she hadn't used Ofa at 30% which left her out of stamina from doing that. 
Katsuki, on the other hand, rushed at her fast, throwing a gut punch to her, making her launch back a couple of feet. Again, Katsuki was on her tail, coming back to her while using his quirk to boost him, and threw a kick to the side of her ribs that felt like it had broke two of her ribs in the process. She didn't even get a chance to attack at all or think all Katsuki was doing was going for blows that left out of breath and dizzy. He thought that this was enough of his attacks and was going to finish this by knocking her out with a kick to the head that might knock her out by doing so. Getting ready to launch at her again, he ran at her with all of his speed along with boosting himself. His foot was just now hitting its target when All Might's voice came through their earpieces. All Might, Hero Team wins. In shock that he had lost to them, he yelled into his earpiece for Ida, who responded with a confirmation that they had just lost by Kirishima knocking out Ida and touching the bomb. To say he was royally pissed off was an understatement of the year. Kaduki felt like he was going to blow up this whole building if it wasn't for All Might calling them back outside for evaluation. All Might had asked who was the MVP of them all and Momo had said that it was both Ida and Kirishima for doing what the assignment had asked of them that left a bitter taste in Katsuki's mouth, it was the taste of defeat and humiliation, maybe blood from the constant bidding on the lip. The class went off with some losing to others while some like Todoroki just froze anyone when he got inside the building winning the matches almost every time. It was the end of the day when Izumi woke up with a pounding headache from Katsuki's kick along with being in an arm cast until tomorrow from what Recovery Girl had told, Izumi walked back to her classroom, which was mostly empty beside Aizawa looking at footage of their fight marking stuff down. Aizawa, just the person I was waiting for Yagi come here for a second. Izumi walked towards her uncle scared of what he was going to tell her about the fight in today's class. Aizawa, I have seen something interesting in today's footage, you want to know what I saw. Izumi? Yes please mister. Aizawa. Aizawa. I saw you holding back again today which is what I found annoying, why do you hold back huh? You think you are someone who is on top of everyone is that? Because that's what I'm seeing here Izumi, do you think you're better than everyone? Izumi? No I don't Mr. Kazaizawa, it's just I can't handle my quirk well uh, and I'm scared that I might hurt someone. Aizawa, scared huh? Well from when the last time I saw you, you had perfect control over your quirk, even your dad and mom told me how much training you did to have perfect control over it, so tell me why you are lying to me right now. Izumi, I'm not lying mister. Aizawa, I thought I did have control over my Q quirk, but I was wrong. Aizawa, well if you're not going to tell me anything all I can tell you is that if I see any more of this holding back crap, I will expel you from my class simple, as that now pack up and go home and also think more about what I told. She grabbed her stuff with misty eyes speed walking out of the room while Aizawa went back to watching everyone's fight. I better talk to Shouto about holding back, it wouldn't be fair just to leave him out from harsh advice. Seriously, in the anima manga Shouto should have been at the bottom of the list with Izuku for holding back right. Because Aizawa knew that his quirk was fire and ice, so he too should have been at the bottom of the ranks. Going to the rat in his office, he was reviewing footage of something that caught his eye from today's lunch period. In the footage Nizu saw a black and purple blur grab, something from a desk in the teacher's lounge and leave, he just thought it was a glitch in the system, and didn't think much about it until it came to bite him. After weeks of doing normal school stuff in Yua, it was time for class wanted to go to a special training site that day, everyone was led onto a bus where they made their way toward a large part of Yue that led past the woods into a big dome-like stadium called the Asti. Aizawa, welcome to the Asija. Here you'll learn the meaning of being a hero, so you better give it your all that means you Yagi and Shouto or else. Everyone got off the bus to see 13 greeting them, while Yoraka was excited to see her favorite hero here. In front of the building doors 13 had told them what kind of exercise they were doing today in the SJ. After she was done Aizawa walked to her to ask where All Might was. Aizawa, so where's All Might 13? Wasn't he supposed to be here to help us teach them? 13. He is resting now since he ran out of time coming here. Aizawa, Damn it I knew having that blonde buff in here to teach was a bad idea Sai. 
he walked up to the group of kids talking amongst each other about what they were going to do first and asked for their attention. Aizawa, all right, we are going to do the exercise now since All Might is running late at this time, so be ready for anything understood. 1A, yes sir. Everyone started to walk towards the big stairs leading down where they saw many different areas that were pretty cool to look at. But as they walked down a strange purple mist started to form near the fountain, out came a hand to fully reveal a man with blue hair and multiple hands on his body. Next to him was a man wearing a fancy suit while his body looked like purple mist swirling, while many men came out of the portal ready to fight. Izumi, Mr. Aizawa, who are those guys? Aizawa, stay back all of you, 13 get the kids out of here while I distract them. Putting on his eyewear, Aizawa jumped down the flight of stairs, seeing that four people's hands were aimed at him, he got shot at by a villain. Throwing a kick to his head, knocking the person out, and going to the other guy, punching him straight on the nose, leaving him dazed by it, Aizawa used his capture scarf to grab the big guy's arm, jumped up kneeing him on the face, and quickly using his scarf grabbing anyone near him, knocking them out with one punch to the faces. Another big guy came running at him with a sword, seeing this launched the scarf disarming him by dislocating his shoulder, and two other came to assist the man knocked out. Skillfully Aizawa was knocking out every villain who made their way to him. Until he heard the man with hands on his body tell someone called Namu to capture him, and in a matter of seconds a big bird-like guy run to him fast. Not having enough time to react the Namu grabbed his arm with his large hands, snapping his arm with ease causing Aizawa to grunt in pain, while the guy who he heard the mist guy call him Shigaraki. Shigaraki? Oh how nice it is for you to join us Earserhead, how do you like my Namu so far? Aizawa, what do you want with us? Why are you here? Shigaraki, me? Well we are here to kill All Might of course, but I don't see him at all so where is he Earserhead? Aizawa, I don't know. Shigaraki, well maybe we should kill a few kids for a present when he gets here don't you think? Kurajiri make sure no one leaves this place at all. Kurajiri, understood young master. Walking in a warp gate, he was now in front of the students stopping them from going to the door. Kurajiri, I'm sorry children but I cannot let you leave just yet. Just then Katsuki jumped at him along with Kirishima from behind him but were sucked into a warp gate taking them somewhere else but the doors. 13. What did you do to those kids? Kirajiri, they are just fine. I sent them somewhere else in this place, but now enough talk it's time you all go. Without knowing multiple gates open below, everyone sending them all to different places of the Usei where they were going to meet villains left there for them to fight. While it happened 13 saw an opening and used her quirk black hole on Kirajiri, but that was just what he expected of her to do. The gate opened where the black hole was used, and it had torn Thirteen's back to shred causing her to get knocked out by the immense pain with Thirteen out of commission. Kirajiri teleported back to Shigaraki who was watching as Aizawa was getting his leg snapped by the Namu. Izumi was sent to the blazing city with villains in front of her with fire quirks getting ready to use them on her. She used her quirk to fling a large piece of rubble to the group making them fall back. She looked around calling for anyone near her and heard no one was around her so that meant she was alone here which means to regroup of with anyone she sees and maybe go back to the door to call for help. In the middle of running Izumi ran into Gyro, Momo and Denki fighting off villains who were closing in on them. Seeing that Denki was out of it, Izumi rushed in punching the man about to grab Gyro causing them to see Izumi lift large rocks in the air and throwing them at the villains. Momo, ah Yagi thank you for the assist. Gyro, yeah dude thanks a bunch. Izumi, have any of you seen Ida? He is our best chance of getting out here to get help from the teacher at Yua. Gyro, no we didn't we were busy trying not to get killed. Momo, let us stay together and go look for any one of our classmates. Izumi, got it and in the meantime let's go find Ida because I have an idea. The four ran while Izumi carried Denki who was still in his dumb mode from his overcharge. On the way to the entrance they found Ida who was carrying an unconscious Siro on his back. Izumi, Tenya, there you are. Ida, 
Thank goodness you guys are all right come. We already have a group of us hiding for now. They ran to a spot where half of the class was except for Shouto, Shoki, Katsuki, and Kirishima. They all were on guard ready to fight villains from just looking at them all some were bruised and dirty but no one had any life-threatening wounds at all and that was all she needed to know. Izumi, Tenya come here I have a plan for you to go and get the heroes for us since we have no communications with anyone outside the Asti. Tenya, but I do not wish to leave any one of you guys I am staying here. Izumi, Tenya, at this point, if the heroes don't come here in time, Mr. Aizawa will be dead, and maybe one of us use your head, you are the only one fast enough to go warn the heroes. Tenya, but, Izumi, no, Ida, please just do this, or we may die here. Tenya, Sai, you are right, Yagi, but how do we get out of here that Mist Fellow is guarding the door with his life? Izumi, I have a way to make a door myself. Tenya, but how? Izumi, just watch. She walked up to the wall that led outside and cocked her arm back, while doing it Ofa lit up under her skin glowing a red color all over her right arm and made Ofa go to 100% which will most likely break her arm bad, one swift punch it connected to the wall breaking it for Ida to run outside to warn the teachers about the usage being attacked. Tenya, I'll be back in ten minutes stay safe my friends. They watched as his engines turned on making him run as fast as he could to make it back to Yua for them, and he was their hope of getting out of this alive. The wait felt like hours upon hours for them all, but they all saw a large ice glacier in the air, meaning that both the Todoroki twins were in the middle of fighting, Izumi decided to go help them even if her arm was broken. Getting there Izumi saw that Katsuki had Aizawa who passed out due to blood loss and seen a large bird thing in their ice screeching while half its body torn off from the possibly sub-zero temperatures ripping his arm and leg off. The group saw its body start to regenerate at a fast-paced muscle and everything was seen stitching it back together as it had never happened at all. Shigaraki, kill them Namu, they are just getting in the way. Namu ran to Shoki and caught her off guard with a backhand causing her to fly back, but checking herself with ice, Katsuki used his quirk to try and cripple him. In the end, it did not affect it whatsoever, Izumi was in its sight making her panic, while it came running at her at full speed, she closed her eyes, but nothing happened to her and a big boom came from the entrance to everyone's amazement. It was All Might who was not smiling at all his face was twisted with angry seeing that the kids were attacked when he was supposed to protect them. All Might, have no fear children, for I am here. Running at his top speed caused a massive air explosion, making everyone close to him fall from the sheer force of his speed, while making his way toward the group who fought the Namu, All Might knocked out every villain in his path, leaving unconscious villains behind him. All Might grabbed the group and put them down far from the three main villains, he got up to face the three by himself when Izumi grabbed the hem of his dress shirt. Izumi, father don't go that Namu thing is too strong. All Might, it is all right, Izumi I'll win for sure just you watch. Izumi, watch out father, it has some regeneration quirk along with a strength quirk. He looked at her and looked back to the three watching him and with a smile gave her a thumbs up. All Might ran to the Shigaraki who commanded the Namu to kill him, the Namu pounced at him grabbing each other hands and locking them and both having who would overpower whom. Of course, All Might overpowered it throwing it far from the group recovering, Namu threw a punch to his weak spot causing him to spit out blood, All Might swiftly punched the Namu's abdomen making it screech in pain. Both All Might and the Namu started to throw punches at each other at a fast pace, people who were near only saw an afterimage of fists hitting their targets fast. Knowing it had two quirks worried All Might greatly and now knew that FO was most likely alive, the other thing was that he was starting to lose more time deciding it was either get killed or win, this fight All Might knew that he had to go full 100%. To test the water, All Might punched the Namu five times with 100%, making it stagger a bit before recovering. Shigaraki, haha it's too late, All Might the Namu has three quirks since you know two of them, why don't I tell you the third one is shock absorption. All Might, shock absorption eh? 
Well, if it is just that it must have a limit of how much it can last against my punches, let me tell you about our school motto. He started to hit the Namu leaving no room at all to block or recover from his punches, and now All Might was in front of the Namu ready for his last attack to defeat the Namu. Go Beyond Plus Ultra 100% one for all, Texas Smash The Namu shot in the air breaking the ceiling in the process, making the Namu soar through the air and landing outside in a creator of dust. Shigaraki, that's cheating. All Might, it ain't cheating young man. Now give up, or I will use lethal force to stop you. Kirijiri, calm down Yaug Master, it's obvious that he's weak right now from his last attack, we can kill him together. Shigaraki, yeah you are right Kirijiri, let's do it right now. Bang 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 bang. Bullets started to shoot that shot right into Shigaraki's thighs and arms causing Kirijiri to protect him, he opened a gate for them to leave since more teachers had arrived there fast. Shigaraki, I'll kill you next time all might. They both were gone by the time the teachers were at the gate just now closing in front of them. All the teachers were ordered by Nezu to go look for the rest of the kids. Everyone was found to be all right, no one was hurt too bad, but the group fighting the Namu. The kids were talked to by Tsukachi for any clue about who attacked them, and after everyone got checked out by paramedics, Yua told the kids to make their way back to the bus to go home from this hard day, but the day would only get worse for some. Oh life could be dream sh boom, if I could take you up in paradise above sh boom and tell me, darling I'm the only one that you love life could dream. 1A and the teachers looked up to see someone walk up to them, looking rather happy singing a song that was rather catchy, but were on high alert from the attack. Some like the twins and the teachers saw Izuku walking towards them with Inko looking at her son walking to them. Midnight, Izuku what are you doing here? Izuku, oh just coming here cause I heard you all were getting attacked. Midnight, thank you honey but didn't you say you had a big job to do today? Izuku, yeah, that's why I'm here. They saw him throwing something up, and he put it on his shoulders, which started to grow into a weird purple slug with a face Tsukachi looked like he had seen a ghost. Tsukiwachi, you're, you're, Izuku, haha, yeah, I am. Tsukachi, Toji Fushiguro. The heroes heard about Toji Fushiguro and were shocked that Izuku was him, while some were shocked Ninuri felt like throwing up. Her baby nephew was a known villain. Midnight. Ayuzuku, please don't tell me, honey. Izuku, that was her answer from him. Nimiri felt as if she failed as an auntie to him. On the other hand, Inko felt like she had led him down this path of villainy. All Might, what is the meaning of this Izuku what are doing here? Izuku, well, like I said, I came here for my job to kill a certain someone. All Might, so you are with that group of villains, ha, huh? I didn't raise you to become a villain, Izuku, surrender to us now. Izuku, nah, I was paid to come and kill someone here. Oh, and if you think it's you, then you're wrong because it's, he said while pointing at Inko with a grin. Izuku, you, Inko Yagi, have a bounty of dollar five thousand thousand dead or alive, and I intend to kill you here, and now but first something I got to deal with. He blitzed towards midnight in a flash, knocking her out cold with a chop to the neck. The heroes could not believe their eyes. Izuku was so fast it was like he made no sound when stepping. Izuku. As of today I disown the name Izuku Yagi and take the name of Toji Fushiguro. Toji said while taking out the soul split katana and smirking at the heroes challenging them to come at him. Izuku. As of today I disown the name Izuku Yagi and take the name of Toji Fushiguro. Everyone stared at Toji standing in front of them with the soul split katana ready for anyone to attack him. Just from looking at Toji some would think that in the way he stands, his guard is down but too many experienced people in the field of fighting like the heroes he was ready to counter-attack the second someone attacks him. Katsuki, Deku, All Might, Young Bakugu don't. Toji smirked at the blonde boy coming to him yelling that disgusting name to him, and as soon as Katsuki was seconds from blowing up his face, Toji was gone and was already behind him ready to slash his back, Katsuki's back was slashed and was bleeding badly from it. The teachers were shocked at how fast Toji was and all might thought he was way faster than his old teacher Gran Torino. 
His teacher left what seemed to be an after image, but Toji was so fast it left nothing behind, and he made no sound when moving. One o were horrified at how easily one of their strongest was taken down so quickly, the twins saw him and were somewhat scared of Toji, Katsuki was on the ground bleeding from the attack, he passed out from exhaustion and blood loss. Toji felt like he was over the moon when doing that to Katsuki finally, he put that walking bomb to shame with one attack, he looked over at them all but mostly Inko smirking at them ready for someone to attack again, he saw no one wanting to fight him so Toji just blitzed toward them to bring the fight to them. In a flash, Toji was in front of All Might already throwing a punch to his weak side that he just found out about when he sneaked his way into Yua. All Might felt like he could tank his son's punch, but was sadly mistaken when he saw that the punch was aimed at his scar, he was about to counterattack himself, but it was too late Toji's punch ripped through the stitches causing a massive amount of pain, making him cough out a lot of blood and was sent hurling toward the trees. Seeing that All Might was down for the Count Vlad came rushing him ready to throw a knockout punch to Toji, but that did not happen when Toji saw him coming at him, he brought the katana down fast cutting Vlad's face in a vertical line ripping his mask and cutting his eye in the process. While he was trying to recover Toji kicked his face launching him back to the UA teacher. Ectoplasm and Snipe came to help Vlad after seeing him getting wrecked by Toji quickly, Snipe shot real bullets into Toji's thighs well tried too. Toji rushed him and took both his revolvers while headbutting his face breaking his nose, then after that he got punched in the stomach hard, while that happened many ectoplasm clones ran to him, sensing they were just clones, Toji really fast cut them all down as fast as they came and was in front of ectoplasm in a blink of an eye was uppercutting him in the air and knocking him out. Hound Dog, Present Mike, Cementos and Power Loader rushed Toji to take him down in a 1v4, they thought it was going to do easily since they were pros, but were sadly mistaken. Toji swiftly punched Present Mike's neck breaking his gear, while he tried to stun Toji with his quirk, Power Loader on the other hand was able to land a hit on Toji with his mech making Toji dizzy from the smack from the metal hands, he looked at Power Loader for any weak points on the mech, and ran at him full speed to distract him which it had work and slashed the katana on the metal limbs destroying the function in them and with three quick punches to his chest breaking five ribs. Cementos tried to help out Power Loader, but as he used his cement Toji threw Power Loader at his attack injuring him. Seeing that there were only two left Toji wanted to get to Inko, he swiftly punched them both and knocked them both out to get to her. Putting the soul split katana away Toji grabbed another katana that was just a normal one and ran to Hound Dog and stabbed him in the stomach making him crouch down in pain while punching him on the face four times. Damn, this brat hits like a truck. When that happened Cementos tried to capture Toji walking to Inko who could only just stare at her son. Making his way to her with a smile, Cementos put him into a cement dome, thinking that was going to stop Toji. A blade stuck out from the inside suddenly, it was destroyed by him, Cementos felt his fists connecting to his face, the second the dome broke making him fly backward from the hit. The punch felt like it had almost killed him. The whole U.S. staff was down except Inko, Recovery Girl, and Nezu who watched Toji analyzing his moves for the future but couldn't get anything from him because of how Toji was so fast it was like he had a speed quirk. Toji made his way to Inko but Recovery Girl stood in his way. Recovery Girl, please Izuku don't do something that you will regret. Toji, I already made my decision Granny now move or I'll cut you down. He pushed her out of the way and finally standing in front of Inko was Toji who was looking at her with confidence that he was going to 100% kill her with absolutely no remorse for her when he does kill her. Toji, you gonna put up a fight. Inko, honey please don't do this. Toji, nah there is no honey, this now Inko, that was gone the day you abandoned me. Inko, please Izuku, I wanted to help you, but your father wouldn't let me. Toji, TCH, lying to the bitter end habitch. Inko, please Izuku I didn't want to hurt you, please come back and surrender to us. Toji, well if you don't want to fight then I'm sure your little golden child's dead body will probably motivate you. 
Toji pulled out the inverted spear of heaven quickly and was gone in a flash suddenly in front of Izumi, whose eyes widened in fear that her older brother was going to kill her. She lifted her hand to block the spear that had just now cut her knuckles. While Inko saw this happening, she screamed for him to stop. He smiled knowing that she was going to try and use her quirk on him. Once again Toji was beside her with the spear ready to kill, and the blade pierced through her forearm. Toji began to cut her right arm off and backhanded her in the face. He ran to her flipped the spear to aim at her stomach and stabbed her three times. Every student watched as Queen Aspur, one of the top pro heroes, got handed to buy some with no quirk. Inko couldn't think straight from all the damage she was taking plus her quirk didn't work at all when he stabbed her which she found odd. But now she faced upward towards the sky looking at it, Toji walked into her view of it grinning while lifting the soul split katana to stab her through the head. She heard someone screaming at Toji who she looked to see Izumi glowing bright green with lighting arcs surrounding her. Izumi, leave her alone Izuku. She flew right at Toji punching his face while her fist connected some blood got into Toji's mouth. Toji felt the punch and kneed her stomach knocking her out instantly without holding back, getting back up with a grunt, he walked back to Inko who was surrounded by the one a student's looking at him with fear. Toji, move or I'll kill you all. Denki, no way in hell dude. Tsukachi, Izuku put down the weapon and surrender. Momo, we'll protect her with our lives. Shoko, please Izuku stop this, this ain't you. Ida, stop or we'll bring you in. Mina, my parents won't cut your hair anymore if you don't stop Izzy. Toji, haha you see what I did to your teachers, you think you can stop me well, I welcome you to try. He stood his ground waiting for anyone to come rush him. But he saw that everyone was too scared to approach him, he thought that this was wasting a lot of time and just decided to take them out so he could get his money for her death. Without being ready for it Ida was kicked in the ribs breaking half of them, Momo got gut punched the second she tried to use her quirk, Shoko was the only one close to catching him with her ice quirk, but Toji broke out of the ice the moment it touched his pants and punched her right in the nose. Denki used his quirk on Toji and knowing it was bad if it touches him he jumped out of the way so the attack ended up hitting Mina stunning her. Tsukachi pulled out his gun and shot three times at Toji who saw him shooting through his knife at Tsukachi's shoulder making him fall in pain. Toji smiled and finally walked up to Inko on the ground, lifted his katana and brought it down stabbing her in the chest. All Might got back up to see Inko cough out blood from the stab of the katana and Toji looked at All Might who was just barely holding on to his buff form. Tashnori had just seen his son stab Inko in the chest while smiling at it, he wished that this was not happening right now, not to him. All Might stared at them both eyes widened with tears leaking out of them and were ready to launch at Toji already walking away from the mess he made of the teachers. Toji, oh All Might and Tsukachi, you should have seen the face Knight I made before he died. All Might, you bastard why? Why do this to your family? Toji, no reason. Just needed the money. His reason made All Might mad and ready to go to Toji with his full strength, looking down at his stomach was a blade piercing it. He saw Toji walk away, making all the students move away from him like a wave being split. Toji was gone the second the teacher began to stand back up from the beating they had received, recovery girl got to Inko as quickly as she could and started to heal her that way she could still survive this moment. She ordered all the students to lift her onto the bus while Katsumi grabbed Izumi off the ground and back to the bus to rush back to Yua. One word was all that was in Izumi's mind that kept saying over and over. Guilty. Four days later, Tashinori woke up breathing heavily and saw that recovery girl was sitting at her desk frowning while looking at papers. Tashinori, recovery girl what happened, is everyone okay? Recovery girl, Sit back you big oaf or your new stitches will rip. Toshinori, sorry but are the kids okay? Recovery girl, yes the children are okay but in Koshi. She's in a coma, we don't know when she'll wake up. She was stabbed in her stomach and the blade Izuku used tore through her intestines causing a lot of blood loss which she was almost out of. 
The other wound she got was a stab to the chest that punctured her right lung. She also lost her right arm because for some reason all the doctors who had healing quirks that could reattach limbs somehow couldn't and we lost the arm due to not reattaching it in time. The rest of the staff sustained minor injuries like Vlad who lost his left eye. Hound Dog was only stabbed in the stomach which we healed, Power Loader also didn't take much damage expect only he got a concussion. Cementos was put in a medically induced coma which he woke up just yesterday, Present Mike broke his collarbone from the punch by Izuku, Ectoplasm's jaw was broken which is in the middle healing that would take 4-5 weeks to heal. Snipe didn't take any damage but only left with a broken nose, and the two you already know about Aizawa's and 13's injuries. The only student who was injured was Katsuki. The slash on the back will leave a nasty scar. Toshinori, did we capture him at least? Recovery girl, no. Toshinori, damn it. Why did he do this? That was his mother. Recovery girl, whatever caused him to do this seems to be your fault, Toshi. Toshinori, what? My fault? How is this my fault? Recovery girl, Toshinori Yagi do not yell at me or you can kiss whatever healing I'm doing to Inko goodbye. Do you understand me? Toshinori, sorry Chiyo, but how is this my fault? Chiyo, just think Toshinori, just think about it while I go check on Inko at the hospital. Everyone is waiting for you in the meeting room. You can move around Toshi, but not too much. Toshinori sat on the bed thinking about how Izuku becoming a villain was his fault, after a couple of minutes he got up limping his way to the meeting room where he heard everyone talking. Nazu, my Toshinori, it is my pleasure to see you up already. Toshinori, why yes so what is this meeting for? Nazu, to talk about this group called the League of Villains who attacked just four days ago and talk about what we are going to do about your son. Walking into the room he saw the staff in bandages, while Midnight looked lost in thought, and walked to a chair next to Nezu who began to talk about the group. Nezu, as we were talking about the Namu that All Might had taken down after we arrived, we got some good and bad news about the Namu. The bad news is that the Namu is a person who was posted as lost about one year ago with three quirks, super strength, super regeneration, and shock absorption. The good news is that we have it in custody and are being sent to prison until they find a way to reverse whatever happened. Tsukachi. And now on the other news. Izuku Yagi or Toji Fushiguro, the one we now know who killed everyone at a Yakuza base and had attacked us four days ago at the usage almost killing half of us, and Queen Espear, or as you know her Inko Yagi was left in a state of comatose due to her injuries along with him being the one who had killed Tamaki Amajiki, Tagata Mirio, and Sasaki Murai. The HPSC has sent a request that we do not release any information about Izuku Yagi due to him being quirkless. Vlad kind, so what he gets to roam the streets of free man for attacking a school. Midnight was pale only feeling sicker by the minute from all the information she was taking in that her baby committed. Present Mike, hey Nimuri, I think you should go home and rest. Midnight, huh? No, it's good I need to hear this. Eraserhead, just go home, Nimuri. Midnight got up from the table while everyone looked at her wobble her way out holding her stomach. Toshinori got up as well to check up on midnight, he walked to her leaning on a wall and crying. Toshinori, hey Nimiri, I just wanted to ask well have I been a good father to Izuku. Nimiri, huh? Toshinori, well it's just that. Nimiri, what? He turned into a villain. Toshinori, why yes. Sigh, I don't get why he do that to Inko, that was his mom. I gave him everyone thin. Nimiri, shut up. Toshinori, huh? Nimiri, shut up you old bastard you didn't give him everything you fool, you and Inko just ignored him all his life ever since he was diagnosed quirkless. I was the one to give him everything. I taught him things that you guys should have taught him, but no it was always Izumi this and Izumi that, you guys didn't care about him. Me, Rei and Fayomi took care of him. We were the only ones to comfort him when his family neglected him. Left him to starve, but we did all that while you only cared for that brat Izumi. The only ones you should blame are yourself for the abuse you put him through. Tashinori, what are you talking about Nimuri we care for high?
Mimiri, no you didn't, the first time I saw my baby was he when I found him in the park soaking wet dirty with bruises all over his body along with his hands that were peeling off from god knows what, and he looked so lost that day, and what were you guys doing? Hayagi, that's right only caring for your golden child at a warm home while your son was outside hungry and exhausted. I should have taken him that day, but he said that he was giving you guys another chance, but guess what you blew it. He sure as hell my son Yagi not yours anymore, he is my son. Toshinori, you can't take my son away from him. Nimuri, I sure as hell can Yagi believe me when I say this. Me and the girls have a lot of photos of the bruises he got when left your house back then and now. You better leave me alone Yagi or I'll be sending those photos to the police. Toshinori looked at the woman walking off while holding a photo of a young Izuku and her. Toji walked back home for the very last time since this would probably be the last time he'll ever see his family again. Knocking on the door Ray opened the door for him and hugged him. Ray, hey honey what are you doing here? Izuku, I just came to sleep over. Ray, oh well that's nice since tonight we're having a big dinner Natsuo is coming to visit us since he is coming back home for his break he is getting. Izuku, cool haven't seen him in quite a while. So where is Fayumi? Ray, she's upstairs in her room doing work for her job. Go upstairs and visit her while I cook for everyone. Izuku, all right. Walking up he heard her music playing and walked in to see her writing in a binder. Hearing that someone walked into her room, she turned around to see Izuku standing behind her. Fayumi, hey I can, you here to stay the night? Izuku, yeah. Fayumi, well, if that is the case, why don't we hang out? It's been forever since we last hung out. Izuku, sure. Both of them talked about how each other's day was going, but he didn't tell her that he killed his mother four days ago. The night was good for Izuku who ate dinner with his family minus one since she now knows he is a villain. Natsuo was cool to hang out with since they were both boys they had gotten along whenever they saw each other much like brothers. Izuku went to his room to get ready to sleep, but there was a light knock at his door, and he looked at Fayumi looking at him with a blush. Fayumi, hey I can see can I sleep with why you tonight? Izuku, sure. She walked in and got the bed ready for them both. They were now in the bed both trying to sleep when Fayumi asked him a question. Fayumi, is something the matter Izuku, you looked really sad today at dinner even mom is worried about you. Izuku, I'm fine, it's just that. I won't be around much since my work is making me go for a while. Fayumi, oh oh, when are you coming be back? Izuku, I don't know. They both lay down in an awkward silence. Fayumi talked again, but it was something that had been eating at her forever. Fayumi, hey Izuku, I wanted to ask you something for a very long time, but I wanted to wait for a while until you were of age, but I, I have liked you for a very long time. He was shocked by her confession and turned to look at her blushing madly by him looking at her. Fayumi, I have liked you since you were 16, but I wanted to wait until you turned 18 which you are now so. Izuku Yagi, I'm in love with you. Izuku blushed a little bit and without saying anything she kissed him on the lips, he didn't have to say anything to her at all and decided that he was going to be with her. They both kissed, hugging each other in arms. Fayumi, since you are going away for a while Izuku, let me give you a going away gift. The night was interesting for Izuku who was making love with someone who had taken care of him since he was just a child, he suddenly thought of his wife from the other world and decided that he would give this a try. Morning came and Izuku woke up to see Fayumi hugging his arm, a light smile came to his face and quietly got off the bed. Izuku left the house without telling no one at all and walked away no longer smiling while looking at his phone being blown up by Tamura once again. He picked up the phone to hear Tamura yelling at him. Where the hell are you Toji? You are a part of my league so where the hell were you? Toji, I don't have to tell you at all crusty chill, I'm coming back anyway to collect my money. Ending the call with the screaming man-child and walking back to the bar to collect the contract money from a foe. The walk took him two hours to walk there, and now Toji was in the bar waiting for a foe to call him. Kirajiri, Mr. Fushiguro, would you like a drink? Toji, yeah give me something sweet to drink. 
Kirajiri, I will get that to you soon, a foe is in the middle of a meeting with the doctor, so he'll take a while to call so for now just wait until he calls. Toji, got it. While he waited Toji looked at his phone for texts from Nimiri, but none were sent to him at all. Kirajiri brought his drink to him when suddenly the news started to play, and Nezu with Aizawa along with Snipe were talking about the attack they had just done four days ago. Nezu, I know that we have been attacked, but it will never happen again ever only a few students who shall not be named were injured, but not fatally. As long as they are here our students are safe at Yua so rest assured that we will protect these kids with our lives. In other news, the teachers who were injured are now fully healed and ready to teach the new generation of heroes. One piece of news that we regretfully to you all is that Queen Asper was fatally wounded protecting our students. Toji smirked knowing that the rat was going to tell them all she was killed. Nezu, she will make a full recovery starting this weekend and will be back to teach. What? Toji looked at the screen staring right at it with such intensity that everyone looked at him with sweat going down their faces and saw that he crushed the glass cup. Toji, they used that girl array. So that concludes our fourth part of our series, stay tuned for the fifth part of the series. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.